Well, we're very glad to be reassembled once again on another Lord's Day. We have some that are out sick, and we pray that they will have a speedy recovery. And we want to say welcome to those that will be watching this either uh, stream live on our Facebook page or they'll watch it archived later. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, reach out to us, and we will try to address those with a biblical answer as best that we can. In our Bible class, we're going through Matthew 27 where the chief priests and the elders have brought Jesus before Pilate so as to condemn him to death, and that way that they can, in a way, cleanse themselves from what is about to take place. And it's interesting that there's a lot of that that's going on because that's the same mentality that Pilate ends up taking, where he washes his hands to try to say that he's innocent of what's trans about to transpire. But what we're going to do today is take a deeper look into Pilate. Learn some things from his character and make application. That as we are going through this life, that we can find ourselves in these similar characteristics, and we don't want that. Many would look at Pilate and say, yeah, you know, he... He kind of did what he could, but he didn't quite go far enough, and I don't, you know, don't want to end up being like that. Well, then we need to do a character study. View his actions and to realize that what is happening in Luke 23 and in Matthew 27 are not things that are just happening out of the blue, but that in fact everything that Pilate has done in his life before is leading him up to this point and the decisions that he ends up making. So whether you're reading from Luke 23 or Matthew 27, Luke's account gives us some more information that Matthew doesn't. When we consider Pilate, he is one of the most tragic figures on the pages of the Bible. And I would say in that category, there'd, there'd be a very close race between Pilate and Judas of just how sad the stories are. And the sad thing about Pilate and his life, and especially during this point, was that he was his own undoing. That when it comes to the things that are happening to Pilate, there's nobody to blame but himself. What Pilate was, we may be, unless we study his character and take note of these things and say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be this kind of person. There are pilots still alive today because they behave as he did. We do not really know Pilate until we find him in the presence of Christ. And it was here that Pilate really learned what he was and who he was. And that's true of each of us today. It is not until we come face to face with Christ that we show what we are, and where we stand. It is not until we come through trial and that we come through struggle. If you're trying to check Facebook volume, it's there. And that's what's happening with Pilate. He comes into conflict and he's needing to make a decision and he's not ready. What's the reason for him being unprepared. Point number one, when we're considering Pilate, I'm willing to grant, okay? Pilate had some good in him. 
This is shown by the fact that he tried to persuade the people to let Christ go free. That he saw that Jesus was an innocent man. He knew that. The fact that he was better than the ones that cried out for the blood of Christ did not justify him after he yielded. The goodness that he had was not enough to carry him through. It wasn't strong enough. There were other characteristics at play that were stronger than the good that he had. The good that was in Pilate was not based on moral principles. Thus, his goodness did not stand the test in crisis. If goodness is to stand the test in an evil world, it must be founded on moral principles. I cannot make decisions based on what will this do to my family relationship? What will this do to my political position? What will this do to my relationship to the community? Those are not to be the guides. Those are not to be the ways in which we gauge how we're going to make decisions. I must make decisions on what is truth and what is sin. If you do not do that, then you will be compromising constantly. And that's what happened to Pilate. The good that he had failed to compromise. You cannot compromise the truth. To compromise the truth is to pervert it. So there is some positive with Pilate. But here we get into some of the negatives where, okay, Pilate tried and he failed. We usually will think, well, as long as a person tries, they'll be justified. Now, to some degree, that is true. We've studied with the talents that were given to the different servants and how that the one talent man just simply hid his talent in the earth, brought it back to the master, and he was condemned. And we will oftentimes say, just try something. That's true. Just trying and being successful, even if it's just a little bit. You're not as successful as, you know, as much as the five-talent man. That doesn't matter. You tried and you succeeded in something. But with Pilate, he tried and there was no success. He tried and he failed because he compromised. But just as we're saying, Pilate shows that this is not to be the case always. There are some things in which if you try and fail and just simply give up, that's where the problem comes in. Pilate tried to save the Christ. But if you really get down to it, Pilate did not try hard enough. Pilate is the one in power. He is the one that's in charge of the area. We know that Pilate did not want Jesus crucified, and we know that Pilate had the power to save him if he had pursued it. Sometimes our failures are not because we did not try, but because we did not try hard enough. Just some points of application of this. Some have tried to understand the Bible and have failed. And they think, well, because they put forth a little effort, they're justified in giving up. It's the Bible. You get credit for trying. But to fail in this regard is to cost one their soul. It's not a thing of, well, I picked it up and I tried reading it for a little while, but you know, I just couldn't, couldn't get it, but I'll be okay. That's a pilot type of characteristic. Just a little bit of effort. And you're not going that extra mile. Some have tried to obey the gospel. 
They put forth enough effort to learn how. But because of some difficulty, they give up without obeying. Oh, well, they, you know, they tried. They should get some credit. No. You've got to go all the way with it. Pilate could not use the excuse of difficulties to remove the responsibility off of him. Well, the crowd would not go with me. I just, you know, I just couldn't convince the crowd to do what needed to be done. Oh, okay, yeah, we, yeah, we understand. No, that's not an excuse. Well, the people kept me from doing, you know, doing the right thing. No. The buck stops with you. We need to think of Pilate before letting difficulties keep you from obeying the gospel. From doing the right thing. Especially those that are in leadership. And leadership comes in many, you know, many different forms. Just standing up here in front of everybody and teaching is not the only place of leadership. When it comes to husbands and the leading of their home, a husband does not get to make the excuse of not doing what's right because, well, I couldn't get my wife to go along with me. Or, well, you know, this is what, this is what she wanted to do. No. That's a bad leader that makes excuses. You do what's right, no matter who's in opposition. And Pilate didn't have that. He did not have that quality. He did not have that characteristic. And there are many today that try to do this as well. Well, you know, I'm trying to do what I can. And really all that is just a smoke screen. All you're trying to do is do the little bit that you can so as to get people off your back. And with that kind of mentality, nothing gets done. Some have even obeyed the gospel and tried to live faithfully and then quit. And they think that because they tried, well, I tried. And thus that they're justified in their failure. But we cannot fail in living the Christian life. Now, in that picture, we're not discussing, well, I fell short, I sinned, made a mistake. That's not failure. Failure is when you fall and you do not get back up. You just stop trying. And that's what Pilate did. Well, let him go. No, we won't let him go. Well, I'll, you know, I'll beat him and then we'll let him go. No, 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 no. we're not going to let him go. Well, fine, I just give up. That's failure. And as we go through our Christian life, as long as we continue to get up and keep pressing towards the mark, we are building and establishing a better characteristic, better character, state of character, than what Pilate had. In looking at the reasons as to why Pilate failed, one point to his failures because he was a product of his past. Now here's what, what we're trying to what we're trying to build and what we're trying to establish. The character out of which his decisions must be made had been building through the years. We are all products of our past behavior. If you are a person with good morality, good integrity, that you stand up for what's right and you've done that in the past, you'll do that now. But if you are a person like Pilate, who throughout your past, 
in lacking steadfastness, in lacking integrity, in lacking the ability to stand up for what's right in the past, then guess what you're going to do in the present? It's the same thing. And thus people need to recognize, yeah, this is how I normally behave, and that's not good, and I need to change it. For Pilate to do what he did in the trial of Jesus means that this is how he has operated before. And we know people like that. You bring up certain people and just like, oh yeah, they're going to fold on you like a chair. How do you know that? Because they've done it before. Oh yeah, you know, you can't, you can't confide in that person because they're loose with their lips. Well, how do you know that? Because they've done it before. Their past behavior is establishing their character now. But that's the thing about the gospel and what we're studying. The gospel, if we're going to obey it, if we're going to be Christians, that means that we have the ability to change that. So as with Pilate, now his past actions will tell on him. And it's the same for ourselves. We do not think enough about the responsibilities of each day. Every day we're making decisions and those decisions are molding our character. So don't take these things lightly. The decisions that we make every day, they become a part of us to either help us or they're going to hinder us when decisions that determine destiny are made. And this is where things like Bible study, prayer, placing the kingdom first, all come in to help us. Because these things become part of our character. Which then enables us to make right decisions when faced with difficulties. Well, I've got this problem and it involves this person. I don't know what to do. Yeah, you do. You do what's right, no matter who the person is. You do what's right, no matter what the situation is. And how many, like Pilate, have failed in some vital decision because they lacked the strength of character. And that because of not seeing the importance of of all of the before mentioned items, the things that are mentioned here. And this is why it's important for us to not just go through it every day like it's the same routine. Every day presents a new set of challenges. Every day presents a new set of situations where you are going to have to be put in a position to choose. Am I going to follow the scriptures? Am I going to behave like God wants me to behave? Or am I going to buckle and succumb to peer pressure? The decisions we make tomorrow will be determined by what goes into our character today. So what are you putting in there? What are you establishing as your behavior? For Pilate, he was already in the business of perverting judgment, perverting justice. And then when it came time to let an innocent man go, he did not have the courage to do it. Another reason as to why Pilate failed 
is because he preferred social standing to spiritual stability. He had rather be accepted by men than to do what was right. He based his decision on how this would make him look to the people and not what it would do to his soul. And how often do we do things that weaken us spiritually just to please the world? A failure to admit sin because you do not want to look weak. You do not want to be embarrassed. Trying to save face. Okay, you'll save your face to lose your soul. Well, I don't want this to hurt my reputation. The only thing that's going to hurt your reputation is if you continue to be hard-headed and not confess when everybody knows that you need to. That's the kind of stuff that hurts reputation. What's, how's the saying go? It takes a big man to admit when he's wrong? And how the world has that backwards. Oh no, if you're going to be a big man, you never admit when you're wrong. That's faulty character. That's a character flaw. That's all based upon previously made decisions. Another reason as to why Pilate failed, Pilate was willing to be a just man if he could be a just man without being poor. Without it having to cost him anything. He would do what's right just as long as he did not have to pay to do what's right. Well, yeah, if doing this allows me to keep my spot, keep my position, then yeah, I'll do that. But oh no, this runs the risk of me losing my seat? No, I'm not doing that. It is impossible in a world filled with evil to do what's right without it costing something. And that's what Christianity is all about. Christianity is based on sacrifice. You are going to have to sacrifice something. And the person that does right only when it is easy is sure to fail when it comes time to do right and it's hard. In learning from Pilate and his character and his worldly views, another reason why he failed is because he, he valued earthly things more than spiritual things. When he had to choose between earthly values and spiritual values, he chose the earthly. The person that does not recognize that spiritual values are supreme will never succeed in serving God. Matthew chapter 9. You cannot serve two masters. You will love the one and hate the other. You cannot love this world and serve this world. and expect to make it to heaven. It's one or the other. And Pilate had the Christ right in front of him, and instead of choosing him, he chose the world. The reason why Pilate failed is because Pilate would do right if others would. If he could have gotten the Jews to release Christ, he would have been glad to let Jesus go. But Pilate's responsibility was not determined by what others did, and neither is ours. How often people think that we're justified in our failures to do what's right because others did not do what's right. Well, why do I need to come to Bible class when so-and-so doesn't come to Bible class? That's a bad character.
That's a person that's looking for an excuse and looking for a way out. Who cares if this person isn't coming? Are you supposed to come? Yes, I'm supposed to come. Well, then you need to come. Well, why do I need to evangelize when they're not evangelizing? What they're not doing does not remove the responsibility that you have to do what you need to do. And then on top of that, how do you know they're not evangelizing? Just because they're not evangelizing when you're evangelizing doesn't mean they're not doing anything. But that's what people do to try to get out of doing stuff. What they know they need to do. Well, let me find some blame in somebody else so I don't have to deal with my blame, with my guilt. When we're looking at Pilate and what he was in the position of doing and that of judging and bringing about justice. Justice is an eternal principle and is not decided by a mob. And so are the things that we do as a Christian. And we just move this into all other sorts of realms. Husbands, love your wives. Well, I would, but she doesn't respect me. No, that's not what that says. Husbands are to love their wives even when their lives are not respecting them. There's no condition to that. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Well, I would, but he's not loving me right. That's not what it says. You do not get to gauge what you're doing based upon what somebody else is not doing. But people play that game, and they play it all the time. That's a pilot mentality. Well, I don't want to be like Pilate. Well, then stop doing that. Stop acting that way. And just simply do what's right. Pilate refused to make his decision on his own convictions. He permitted numbers and noise to push him back from what he knew was right. Now, just consider the number and the noise that's pushing religious error. And how many of our brethren are starting to go along with religious error? Why? They've got the numbers. It must be right. How could so many people believe this and be wrong? And why do they do that? Because their faith is not their own. The reason why our brotherhood is falling off into denominationalism is because we have young people that have simply been doing things because, well, this is what mom and dad told me to do. And the conviction is not their own. And when it comes time for them to stand for the faith, they don't have it. We have to recognize what's right, what's true. We have to recognize what's wrong, what's evil. and stand on those convictions. Otherwise, we will be exactly what Paul wrote to the Ephesian brethren of what they are not supposed to be. And that's children that are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Be steadfast. That takes conviction even in the face of opposition. When the entire world stands against you, if you think about it, we do have the entire world standing against us, aside from a small group. When it comes to what the Bible teaches about water baptism and it being essential for salvation, we are the only ones that present that in its truth. The entire religious world is against us. We still have to stand strong. We cannot be like Pilate and allow the mob and the numbers and the noise to remove us from our conviction. When we consider not just the number and noise of religious error, but even thinking about the numbers and the noise of just the world that's around us. Carnality, fleshliness, 
and that we are encouraged, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That takes conviction. That we can be steadfast and that we can know what is good and not have to be afraid of being wrong. It is not arrogant for us to stand up and to say, no, I know what's right. I know what's good if I know my Bible. What is good, acceptable, and perfect? What is the will of God? And to hold it fast. Now our next point is probably the biggest point and the most common and the easiest to see. Pilate failed because he tried to shift his responsibility. He sent Christ to Herod, then to the priests, finally to the mob. And by doing that, he became a creature of schemes and devices. He was an accomplice. Even though he tries to say, no, I'm not trying to get, I'm not going to get in it. I wash my hands. You don't get to do that. And we have brethren all around us that try to do this on a daily basis. A problem arises in the church, and then the elders want to step back and say, no, I'm not getting into this. That's a pilot. You don't get to do that. You are the overseers of the flock. Get in there and do your job. Problems arise, and our brethren start playing politics. Well, what kind of influence does this brother have? What kind of circles does he run around in? If I stand up against this brother, who else am I going to have to stand up against? And what do they start doing? They start weighing their options. That's pilot mentality. And then they want to start trying to shift blame. They become like the Pharisees. Judas comes to them, I have sinned. And they don't say, I'm... what's that to us? And they push it to the side. Why? Because they don't want to get their hands dirty. That's Pilate. All it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to stand by and do nothing. And that's what Pilate did. A good man that did nothing. And we can tell that this was getting to Pilate's conscience because of what he wanted to do. He knew this was wrong. It struck his conscience and that's the reason why he tried to shake the responsibility off of him. but he still ended up committing sin. So he had enough conscience to try to shake the responsibility, but not enough conscience to keep him from committing sin. And that is the importance of keeping our conscience tender and sensitive to the fact that if we were here and we're seeing this, it's like, man, this just is not right. What these people are doing to this man, it's not just. And I'm going to stand up for him. Well, Pilate, you might lose your job. I don't care. Well, Pilate, the mob might turn on you and crucify you. I don't care. I'm going to do what's right. And in trying to shift the blame, led him into compromise. And that's where it will lead all of us. Pilate failed because he tried to compromise. Or compromise. He agreed to scourge Jesus and to let him go. But was that right to do? Since Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent? No, that's not right. 
well, I've got to give them something. No, you don't. They are just flat out wrong. You do not have to give them anything. And then to think, yeah, this man is innocent, but I'm going to beat him as though he's guilty. And that makes you look good? That just makes you a monster. Truth and right cannot be compromised. To try and compromise the truth is to pervert it every time. And did not Pilate change justice to injustice by trying to compromise? Absolutely he did. There are a lot of, as we're seeing, there are a lot of things that come into play. with what we're going to do with our lives. Another reason why Pilate fails, because Pilate chose worldly friendships over what's right. The Jews made an accusation against Caesar, or excuse me, against Pilate. They could not accuse Jesus, so then they turned their aim onto Pilate. And according to John's record, the Jews said to, said to Pilate, you are no friend of Caesar's. And that is what struck Pilate in the heart. He then saw what these corrupt people would end up doing to him. They would end up bringing false witness against him. And they would take it all the way to the top. And Pilate became a coward. How much better to have been right than to be Caesar's friend. And brethren, when it comes to upholding the truth, I do not have any friends. My friend, first and foremost, is God. And I'm going to stand with Him before I stand with any of you. And that has to be the mindset of all of us. Otherwise, we're going to end up just like Pilate. And we end up sacrificing the truth, which is ultimately sacrificing ourselves. No one person is more valuable than the truth of God. And that when we start making these kind of decisions, that becomes part of our character. You do it once, you're going to do it again. And then nobody can trust you. Well, let's go to this person. We know he'll do what's right. Not if he's like this. Not if he's got any of these characteristics, any of these behaviors. Take note. Watch. And guard. Any of us, all of us, can fall into any of these points. And then Pilate failed because he did not use the strength that was at hand. His wife tried to help. Matthew 27, 19. We read it today, but we didn't, look, we didn't dig into it. But she came to her husband and said, have nothing to do with this just man. Let him go. He wouldn't listen to his wife. Jesus even tried to help him. Jesus talked to Pilate, but he did not talk to Herod. And Jesus told Pilate, according to John's record, that Pilate had nothing to fear from him or his kingdom. He said to Pilate, my kingdom's not of this earth. If it was, then would my disciples fight? Well, okay then. I see you're not trying to start an insurrection. You don't have to worry about anything. All of this help that's coming from over here and how many fail from not using the points of strength that are given to us today by being able to pray, being able to sing, which is a form of teaching. That's a reminder and edification for all of us taking information from sermons and classes, 
and putting those into us to build our character. Personal study that we should be doing. Leaning on and using good brethren. And that's the reason why people fail when it comes time to make decisions. They become just like Pilate. Oh no, I'd never do that. People do it more than you think. And then finally, Pilate made his decision on prejudicial testimony. The Pharisees, prejudiced by tradition and selfishness, and tried to condemn, well not tried, they succeeded in condemning the Son of God. What about us? Do we end up making our, de our decisions by listening to people that we shouldn't? Oh, we should believe everybody. Says who? A quick read through the Proverbs will tell you super fast. You don't just believe anybody. You don't just listen to anything that somebody has to tell you. But that's happening all around us. Well, I heard this preacher say, well, he's a preacher, he's got to be right. Well, my mother always used to say, well, it's your mama, she must be right. We get fed stuff all the time that's not good for us. So we have to scrutinize. We have to examine, we have to investigate. And Pilate, even though he saw through their prejudicial testimony, he knew they did it for envy. But yet he still went along with it. And to think that this is what the world knows about Pilate. Is this what you want people to remember about you? You had the chance to do what's right and you are afraid? You are a coward? But this story could have been different if Pilate had obeyed the gospel. That yeah, this is there, but just like Peter, you know what? That's not how we think about you all the time. Yeah, it's there. We're able to learn from it, but hey, man, you really took on a new characteristic. You really turned over a new leaf. With Pilate, this is the memorial he left behind. And for many people today, this is the kind of memorial they're leaving behind. Because this is how they choose to act. Just think how close Pilate was to virtue and glory. He had the Son of God before him. Pilate spoke to Jesus face to face. And yet he missed it all. Sometimes it just simply is not enough to try. You have to try and try and try. And keep going, no matter what the opposition. If we are to succeed in this spiritual life, then we must be different. We have to have a different character. In the end, the same redemption was made available to Pilate as it was to those Jews that murdered Jesus. Peter presents the sermon, 
on how it is that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God. He is the Messiah that was promised to come. And that a fulfillment of prophecy, proven by the miraculous works that He did, and the ultimate miracle of being raised from the dead. And in presenting all of that evidence, Peter comes to the pivotal point of his sermon in convicting these people of their sin. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Pilate is right in this group. Pilate, that means you too. And what happened in verse 37? Could have also happened for Pilate. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And 3,000 souls changed their story. 3,000 souls were no longer murderers. They became Christians. Pilate could have changed his story too. We could be reading something completely different about Pilate. if he had a better character. Verse 40, And with many other words he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Nobody has to stay as they are. And as we're going through these studies and we're reading about these characters, we need to be doing some inward searching. And we need to be questioning, well, do I do that? Do I behave some of these ways in some of these situations? And if so, we need to start changing that. If we want to succeed, it starts with decisions being made today in the little stuff. The owner of Walmart, Sam Walton, when he was looking to find a new successor to take over the chain as he was about to retire, there's one interview or interviewee that ends up being talked about that wasn't chosen for the job. And the reason why he wasn't chosen for the job was because they all went out to lunch and it was a cafeteria style of restaurant. You take a tray, you get your meat, get your side. And then you got down to the end where all the butter and the different things were and you're only supposed to take one thing. Well, they all start going through the line, and I guess Sam was at the end of the line, and the guy interviewing for the job goes through the line, and when he got to the condiment section where he's supposed to only take one, he took two extra without paying. They sit down to eat, they go through the interview, the interviewee, he leaves, and Sam Walton looks at everybody else and says, you don't hire that man. And they began to question him. Well, why? He's got a good resume. He's got good references. And Sam Walton said, when we went through the line, he stole two extra condiments. Everybody else kind of scoffed at that. And it's just like, well, what's, what's the big deal? And Sam Walton said, a man that will steal in the little things will rob you blind in the big things. Little things matter. Those little decisions that we make end up becoming 
big stepping stones in our character. So choose wisely. Think about what you're doing. Think about what's ahead of you. And learn from Pilate how not to be. And so as we conclude, we invite any that would want to change their story, do what these individuals did. Be willing to hear the gospel, learn of the gospel, and obey the gospel. Become a Christian, become a disciple, ready to learn and ready to be converted, transformed, made a new creature. And for us, that are members of the Lord's Church, let us always remember what we have decided that we wanted to do. We made the decision, okay, I want to be a Christian. I want to follow Christ. That means you need to start making the kind of decisions He would make. Setting aside the worldly view of how, well, this is how I would normally do it. No, no, no. Let's start doing it how the Scriptures say we need to do it. Standing for what's right, no matter what comes. So if any have a need of obeying the gospel or a need of prayers of encouragement, we offer this time as we stand and as we sing together.